Hey guys, welcome back to yet another GCSE revision video. Now guys, carrying on with our prediction series, we're going to be looking at what myself, first rate tutors and Mr. Sally's predict for your upcoming inspector calls exam. And as I've done with previous uh, prediction videos, it's always useful to look at questions that have come up in the past to see if there's any trends and then make maybe an educated guess based on what will come up in your actual 2024 GCSE exams. So if we're looking back over, through the years since this current syllabus started, what was the question that came up in Inspector Falls? There's obviously two parts of the questions and you picked just one. So what was the first half of the question for 2017? Yeah, so the first half was Burling and how he is an unlikable character. The danger with characters, as I always tell students, is if you just write about the character, you don't get the top grades. You have to write about them as constructs. So here you'll be thinking, why does Priestley make Burling so unlikable? Oh yes, he represents all the faults of capitalism. So if we dislike him, we therefore dislike capitalism, which will help Priestley give his socialist message. Now I can get the top grades. Okay, for the same year, the second question that students could choose from is how uh, Priestley uses the inspector to suggest the ways in which society can improve. Now, this exam was interesting in the sense that you had just two character questions, but I think it's because it was such a new set of exams that AQ was kind of experimenting. Now, when it comes to this question with the inspector's character, as Mr. Sallies mentioned, when you're talking about any of the characters, you want to obviously talk about how they're used. So in this case, how uh, Inspector Gore is used as Priestley's mouthpiece to suggest how society can improve. But of course, you also always want to think about not only am I discussing the characters, but also what's the wider message, what are the themes that are relevant. Now, if you have an Inspector Gore question, say for instance, you're answering this question, there is so much you can talk about. As I've mentioned, his Priestley's mouthpiece. He is also used as this omnipotent uh, presence. In other words, he's like this godly presence that's everywhere, right? He knows something about the Berlin characters that they don't, and he triggers them to confess their own wrongdoings, right? And so the inspector's character is really interesting because of course he imparts Priestley's capitalist message. He also was a feminist, okay? So he also stood up for the women characters. You've got Eva Smith, Daisy Renton, but equally Sheila, especially when he tells off uh, Mr. Berlin by telling him, your daughter isn't living on the moon. So I think with an Inspector Gore style of question, you can talk so much about his character, but equally and most importantly, you always wanna think about when you're analyzing his character and how he's showing society can be improved. He is illustrating how society needs to be more equal, right? Sh to shift more towards a socialist society but number two also needs to be equal in terms of gender brilliant and I love the society question so I always tell my students to look for the one that's society usually that's the second one it's always been the second one but we'll see in 2023 AQA flipped it so we come back to the character choice in 2018 Eric how he changes and what his attitudes are the word attitudes now starts to invite us to write about Priestley's ideas. So Priestley is saying, look, this is what Eric does, but this is what I think about his attitudes. And then obviously you're going to pick on his positive attitudes towards not sacking Eva, but his very negative attitudes to how he's exploited Eva sexually and also then ex justified stealing from his father's business in order to keep exploiting her. So really easy to get into the top grades once you start thinking about that second bit of the question the attitudes you're very lucky because you've got the society question <laughs> yes so the question that came up in 2018 the theme question is to do with the importance of social class if you get a class question you should be able to go to town in terms of Parisi is criticizing the Edwardian capitalist system, but more broadly, he's just critiquing the system of capitalism as one which is inherently inbuilt with um, inequalities, right? That's one of the messages of class, okay? If you don't know what the word inherent means, look it up on Google. Also, when it comes to social class, you want to also mention how each of the Berlin family exploits its power 
over Eva Smith and Daisy Renton. And of course, um, Priestley is criticizing the disproportionate power that upper middle class society and also upper class society had. I can go on and on about all the different points that you can make, how Sheila exploits her power and her class advantage over Eva, but of course also the male characters and, and also Mrs. Burning. So there's so much you can talk about with social class and just class in general, okay? And you can also tie it to um, interesting context points, but also you can bring in other theme discussions too. Brilliant. So we get to 2020. Uh, oh, no, we get to 2019. We get to 2019. Sheila learns about herself and society. Really excited about this because the examiners have said, yeah, I know it's a character question, but we want you to do well. So we're going to throw that word society in there. Priestley wants to change society in a number of ways. I'm going to tell you what they are because it will fit every single question. So obviously he wants to change society from one that exploits workers, so a capitalist society, to one that treats workers fairly, a socialist society. So that's the first big idea. The next big idea obviously is that class system and he sees that class system is perpetuating injustice but it also allows the women like Sheila and Mrs Burling to exploit people of a lower class. So he's trying to show how women turn against each other as well as men turning against women in the class system. And that leads us now to the patriarchal system, which he also wants to change. Barbara's talked about him being a bit of a feminist writer. And that's why his victims are mainly female, because he wants people to see, look, this is what's worse in our society, the way men treat women. And that was super invaluable in 1945 when the play was written because millions of men were still away at war and who was going to vote in the new election? All these women. So he wanted to attract the women voter to cho choose to get rid of capitalism and go for socialism. Okay, so for the 2019 theme-related question, it was more so to do with how Precy presents selfishness and its effects on other people. So for instance, effects on society and of course effects on characters like Eva and Daisy Renton. In all honesty, I see this question in terms of selfishness and its effects as a social responsibility question. It's a question to do with how uh, characters like Sheila, Gerald, Eric, Mrs. Burling and Mr. Burling selfishly mistreat Eva. They also selfishly keep the profits to themselves. This question is essentially just a social responsibility question. So as long as you talk about how Priestley's message is that people in the upper classes had a duty. It wasn't a choice. It was a duty and a social responsibility towards helping and empowering people who were from the working classes. Okay, so I think that would be a really, really good question if you had a social responsibility question. Brilliant. Uh, 2020, I got it right this time. Burling cares for himself and his family. This is a dangerous question because I might just write about all the ways that Burling just looks after himself and then looks after his family and forget to deal with why Priestley presents in that way. And so actually I want to do what you've just done. I want to link it to social responsibility. He only looks after himself instead of looking after wider society. He only looks after his family instead of remembering that we're all of one body and have to look after each other. So social responsibility is a go-to theme that will fit everywhere. Okay, and for the same uh, year, the question, the theme question was more so to do with how male characters are presented as irresponsible. Again, I would argue this is firstly a social responsibility question, so the male characters exploit their power, but also this is a gender question. It's the um, other side of, usually when students interpret the theme of gender, they think about it in terms of the women. But here you're thinking about and interpreting this question in terms of how the men are presented as being in these positions of power and how they exploit the power over Eva uh, and Daisy, but also how someone like Gerald exploits his power over Sheila, even arguably Mr. Burnham, because he's the one that still pushes his daughter towards marrying uh, Gerald, even if he's confessed to having an affair, right? So I think this question is interesting because you can talk about both the uh, theme of social responsibility, but also the theme of gender, okay? Yeah, men come out so badly in this world. <laughs> Thank God for the inspector, who's one good guy. Okay. Okay, 2021, uh, you had to write about Gerald, 
and explore ideas about responsibility. This is actually my favourite question because I hate Gerald more than anybody else in the play. I think he's the most corrupt because he's the one who also justifies everything he does and he thinks he's great, but actually everything he does I think is evil. But never mind Mr Sellers' prejudices. How are you going to get the top grades? By writing about why Priestley presents Gerald in this way. Uh, I think he wants to show how upper class men are in fact evil even when they don't see themselves as evil so you know why can good people do really terrible things what was the second bullet point the uh, 2021 theme related question was to do with how society is presented as unfair which in all honesty i thought is just another way of talking about how the inspectors used to suggest ways that society uh, can improve okay now in terms of society is unfair you can go to town when you're talking about all the main themes within the play you obviously want to remember that Priestley's main message when he's depicting society as being unfair is how society needs to shift towards a more socialist and a more equal society. Again, I would say if you have any kind of society question or just general class question, you should be jumping for joy in your exam because there's so much you can talk about. Um, I really like, actually, we haven't mentioned it yet, the Christian symbolism in this play. Um, have you got any thoughts how you might link that to um, society and fairness? So it's interesting you mentioned Christian symbolism because um, that's one of the areas which is often overlooked right so when you're thinking about christian symbolisms what are some of the symbols that you have that kind of sum up to you yeah so you've got the eucharist the members of one body which mm. is what christians say to each other when they're about to eat jesus's body and drink his blood symbolically we're all part of jesus's body and that's significant because obviously all the audience are christian and Priestley wants to draw that out of his audience because he's saying look if you're christians you can't possibly support capitalism because it's not a Christian way of behaving. So you have to be a socialist. It's a little cunning trick. If you're a Christian, vote socialist. There is no choice. And also in terms of the Christian symbolism, you can also tie it to Inspector Gore, who is presented almost as a godlike figure, right? He knows all of these things that the Burlings themselves haven't revealed to each other. He's presented as this uh, omnipresent omnipotent figure right so also um some interpretations or one way you can look at it is he's presented as a godlike figure but also as mr sales has mentioned this idea of the member us being members of one body he also seems almost like a priest right to whom all the different characters confess their sins oh, to yeah. kind of like in catholicism yes. right when people go into confessionals and they confess their sins to the priest so there's also lots of interesting very subtle christian symbolism within this play and of course if you're able to pick up on it you're getting super top marks brilliant we are now in 2022 um what does eric learn about himself and society Fantastic again because it's got that word society in. When I read lots of essays at different grades, you can almost predict what grade a student is going to get by how often they use the word society. Uh, so if you're five or more uses of the word society, you're going to get a grade seven or higher. I know that sounds weird, but actually works out that way. Why? Well, because when you write about what Eric shows us about society, you're writing about Priestley's ideas. And, you know, what is Priestley trying to say about society? I don't have to tell you again, because we just told you at least twice mm -hmm. during the video so far. What was the next point? So, of course, the question is to do with inequality in society leading to tragedy. So, um, the same exam question, so rather the same exam year, 2022, how Priestley shows how inequality in society leads to tragedy. Once more, this is just purely a society question. Um, inequality caused by capitalism. Literally the same points that I've said, you just recycle them. I personally feel like when it comes to Inspector Calls, it's actually quite easy to do quite well in this um, play because the themes are so nicely contained and you can tie it to, or, and even the message of Priestley is so nicely contained within all the different elements of themes as well as characters. Yeah, and I love the, the way that tragedy is in, uh, included here because that forces you to write about the ending. The ending is so rich with this play. And in particular, because we know the ending is 1912, there's like a much later ending, which we know is the First World War and then the Second World War. And the audience know that's what the play is about. And once they start writing about those two world wars and how that connects to the endings, 
I'm into grade eight and nine. That's a separate video though. <laughs> okay, so what came up in last year's exam? So last year uh, was, this blew my mind, uh, what life is like for women. And I thought, oh my God, no, th this is not a, a character question. You know, it hasn't named any women. Um, but that's actually a really good thing because then it's a theme question. And once you're in a theme question, you can write about society. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get top grades, Miss Sanders has told me. And we talked about how in many ways it's a feminist play. So the women are victims, but the women are also the ones who are gonna make the difference at the end through Sheila, if we're lucky. Um, and then we've got the tragedy of the ending where Sheila doesn't tell Gerald no, the, the engagement is definitely, definitely off. He offers the ring and she says, oh no, it's too, th too soon. I'm going to think about it, which leaves us with the awful possibility that she's going to have to compromise and going to have to accept Gerald, which I think is probably what does happen. But Priestley makes us make up our own minds. Okay, and obviously the second question that students could choose from is the idea that how older and younger characters respond to the inspector. This question, in other words, is just a dressed up question of the theme of age, okay? And remember that when it comes to the theme of age, Creasy was very pessimistic when he, came, when he witnessed the older generation and he believed that social change would be driven by characters from the younger generation. So of course, with this question, you can make some really interesting contrasts and comparisons between Mr. Burling and Mrs. Burling versus Sheila and Eric. But also, what's interesting in the wild card that Priestley puts in is the character of Gerald, because he's technically part of the younger generation, but he does not want to change. And what you can maybe make the argument for is this notion that Gerald is used to illustrate how Priestley believed that social change would actually not be driven by the aristocracy, the upper classes. It would be driven by the upper middle classes because they didn't have as much to lose from society becoming equal as people in the aristocracy did. Okay? So, predictions. Prediction time. Uh, so I'm going to predict the character one and I'm going to predict that the question will be about the inspector. Uh, there are two reasons. The first one is... When AQA were first setting this paper, they thought, well, what would be the logical character to have? And they started with the inspector. And obviously, because the inspector carries Priestley's views, he's the mouthpiece, the proxy for, the, uh, for Priestley's views, then that's a really logical one to give students to write about. And the other reason I'm going with the inspector is, if you think about the inspector's last words, if man will not learn the lesson, they'll be t he'll be taught it in fire and blood and um, anguish. anguish. Thank you very much. I was going with brimstone. <laughs> with, with fire and blood and anguish and also the millions of John Smiths and the millions of Eva Smiths. Those quotes will fit 100% of all the essays we've been talking about. So prepare the inspector. If by some miracle you get a different character, you're still going to be able to use the inspector quotes with that character. So my prediction is to do with class. I personally think that the theme that's going to come up is class related. And the reason why I say this is because I believe the only time that class has been explicitly mentioned is back in 2018. Also, because this is such a th central theme, I personally feel like AQA is going to go a little bit easier on you guys rather than picking any of the other themes, which, to be honest, lots of them have come up, right? So, for example, last year, the reference to women is basically a gender theme. Prior to that, you had also um, irresponsibility or social responsibility coming up twice. I personally feel a class theme question is highly likely to come up in this year's exams. And it will be absolutely brilliant if it does, because you're going to write about society. Okay. So thank you so much, guys, for watching this prediction videos. And of course, as I mentioned, guys, I think always remember Priestley's overarching message. And in all honesty, with Inspector Calls, as long as you understand the main four themes and just his main messages, you should do really, really well on this exam. Thank you so much, guys, for listening.